Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I started boiling the peanuts today. In fact, I'm going to put a little clip in. This is the bag that they that it came in. It's it's empty now, but it's the Valencia peanuts that Bob from Mountain Crest Farms. I won those from him, and my little I have my grandkids here, and my littlest one he came in and he said Nona something smells and I was cooking their supper at the time too and I says is it a good smell or a bad smell and he says it's a bad smell and I said well it's got to be the peanuts because it's not your supper and so I don't know if the peanuts make a, an odor or not but he said it was coming from here he says <laughs> as he's coming in because he he was in the other room and apparently the odor, the odor is drifting their direction so the peanuts have been boiling for two hours. They've got a long ways to go. I put them on at five. So tomorrow at five will be 12 hours. And then they've got to go at least 16 to 18 hours. I will test them probably around 14 hours just to see how they are. And if they're not done yet, then they'll go longer. If they're done, then I will take them off the stove. My goodness gracious me. I'm just rinsing them in some cold water. It's going to be good. And it's two gallons. Okie dokie. Let's see how strong I am. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. You have to be quiet in this video, but yeah. And the kid, in fact, the little, the, the other, not the youngest one, it was the second to the youngest. I have four of them here right now. There, are, there is seven. Um, one wanted to stay home, and two of them are at their father's house, so they will be over tomorrow. But um, I have four of them for tonight. And he says, can I eat those tomorrow? No, yesterday. Can I eat those yesterday? And I says, you mean tomorrow. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you can eat them tomorrow. It's funny how kids don't understand today, tomorrow, and yesterday. It's um, very confusing to them. But he can have them tomorrow because yesterday is gone. And tomorrow is to come, which will become today. So he'll be eating them on Sunday because they have to cook a long time. I was watching a video today that they were talking about. It's about food again, people. I know. I got to put it in there. But um, it made me chuckle because the um, they always say, eat your oatmeal because it's healthy, heart healthy, and good for you. And the steel cut oats are supposed to be even better. They're not. They just cost more. And in the video, they were the. Um, it was Mike from Carnomad that was talking about this, and um, he said in the in the early early years in the uh, I wrote it down in the um, Victorian Eng Victoria England in the Victoria times in England. What did they call oatmeal at the time? And I said it, 
before he even said it, but it was called gruel. So, and then he gave the little story about the the rich family wanting to know. The kids were asking, "Why can't we have gruel?" <laughs> because we're not poor enough. And I I just got a chuckle out of that. So it was for the real poor people. So those of you that want to eat oatmeal, you're eating your gruel. So make sure you eat your gruel in the morning. <laughs> it sounds horrible to say gruel. Oatmeal sounds better. It does have a prettier sound, but it's not got any different. It's still, it's like, it's like when I wanted, to, there was an advertisement on TV. And it looked so good and fluffy and really good and what it was is they were advertising maple and the little boy would say I want my maple and I asked my mother to buy me maple because I thought it looked really good because they had and the advertisements then had funny cartoons they weren't like they are today and it was um, just kind of like a pencil drawing but it still looked really good to me so my mom bought me some maple, which was oatmeal that had a maple flavor. And it was more like a cream of wheat kind of oatmeal, that kind of um, oatmeal or farina. Like, I don't know if you've had farina or not. Farina and cream, wheat, cream of wheat, I think, are pretty close. Or maybe they're the same thing. I don't even know. But they're pretty it's close. Similar. Probably the same thing. Then he talked about fried foods. You know, when I was growing up, my father, he lived to 93. My mother was four months short of being 90. But we had a lot of fried foods, fried meats, fried everything. Um, and I remember my mom complaining about how chicken wings, the butchers used to throw those away, and so you could buy a whole bunch of them for just a very few cents until people realized that chicken wings are pretty good. And so they were selling them at a higher rate. And also the oxtail, or the certain bones that my mom used to like to get so that she could boil them and make a nice stock. Those they used to get for pennies too, and then people realized that that's pretty good stuff. So now you have to pay a lot more for an oxtail bone. Also, when we used to get the artichokes. Artichokes used to be, oh my goodness, they used to be less than 25 cents a piece because nobody was eating artichokes. Now artichokes are expensive too. You go into the store and you, you get an artichoke and it's like probably, two, well around here it's two dollars, sometimes almost three. And what you do is when you're gonna buy an artichoke, you know, they're, they, they think the bigger the better. No, that's tougher. You really want smaller ones. And when you, when you buy an artichoke, you pick them up and you kind of, you have to, like the top, the artichoke is like this, so the, this part of it you would spread it with your fingers. And if you see any of the leaves going like this over top, that's too, it's not a good artichoke, don't buy it. You wanna see all the leaves kind of upright when you open up that center, because then you'll get a lot more out of it. And you, when you cook an artichoke, I've seen so many cooking shows where they take the poor artichoke and they scoop out the whole thing and they pluck, they pluck all the leaves away, and it's like, oh my goodness, they're wasting all that good stuff. You, I, I, probably I should cook artichokes or show how to cook and eat an artichoke someday because they are so good. But the thing is that I, my mother used to cook them two different ways. She used to do the lazy way, and she used to do the good, the tasty way. Um, the lazy way is the way I really should be eating them, but I don't. I would rather have them the tasty way, which would mean I'd have breadcrumbs and cheese and put in them, which I love that. It was the cheese and the breadcrumb part that I liked. But um, the lazy way was where she didn't stuff them. They were just steamed oh. is how they were. You put a little water in the bottom of the pan, put the cover on and you steam and when, when a leaf will pull off then you knew it was done. But the artichokes are really, really good. And people that, when you watch the fancy shows cooking, they demo they just destroy it. They waste it. It's it's so sad. They waste so much of that delicious artichoke. Then the um, my kids when they would have artichokes, they never liked the heart. You take the choke off the top of the heart, 
and then the heart would be there. And they, they never liked that, and, and I used to like when they didn't like it, and then all of a sudden their taste changed, and they liked the heart too. So they ate their own heart instead of me eating it. Sounds funny, eat your heart. <laughs> eat your heart out. <laughs> Artichoke heart, yes, not your own heart. Although you can eat heart, um, we used to eat heart, going on to heart. We used to eat the beef heart. Beef hearts is what we ate. And we ate um, beef liver, of course. I never liked liver, and I'm almost afraid to cook it again because I, I remember it as a kid and I didn't like it. Maybe I would like it now, I don't know. But I know my mom used to cook liver quite often. She cooked liver, she cooked tripe. I, I liked, I started to like tripe. Tripe was another one that was kind of hard to, to stomach. <laughs> hard to stomach, it is the stomach. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, it, tripe, tripe is, the, is the stomach, the lining of, of the cow. It's, it's, yeah, you have to, boil it and you have to peel it. It's not an easy process. When you buy it from the store, I don't even know if it's fully cleaned or not. I have no idea because I've never cooked it. My grandfather used to cook it for the Beaver's Club. He was the best. The Beaver's Club was a bar that you had to belong to to go to and he was the main cook for that and everybody talked about his tripe for years and years and years and years and years. In fact, when I was working at the count, at the um, McDonald's, the old timers that would come in, they would talk about the tripe at the Beavers Club, and then they would say, "And it was your grandpa that used to cook them." And I go, "Yeah, it was my nanu. We called him nanu." And so um, he cooked it. And so my father and my mother knew how to cook tripe, so it was really tasty. And I actually liked tripe. Not everybody likes tripe, but I liked it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this talk of food. It went from from gruel to tripe <laughs> and the and stomach and whatever and heart. Yeah, all the and artich The only that's thing that was not meat in that that I talked about was the artichoke, and that's high in fiber. I don't know what it's got a lot of vitamins artichokes are good for you I don't know what they're good for but they're good for you so and you have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow <laughs> bye bye